Hey there YouTube, Chaos Cuber here. Today I have a massive, huge, crazy unboxing from the Cubicle America. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so here we are back again with the standard two camera setup that's always questionable in workingness and execution, but I guess we're going to see how well it works today. <laughs> First off with the second camera, that completely blocks it and is completely unusable, so I'm gonna have to put that camera up a little bit. But there is the box from the cubicle. A long story with this one here. I basically ordered this on January 2nd, day after New Year's, and it just finally got here today on the 25th, I think, or 26th today already, so that's pretty crazy. Definitely took a little while, but it is here. Excluding one puzzle, which I'll talk about here in a minute, which apparently that was delayed a little bit Which is part of the reason this took so long But I guess we're gonna see what's in here and let's without further ado get right into the box Pretty excited for this one. There should be some interesting stuff Let's just slice right into it here. This is my knife. That's actually not dull like my other one there I need to get a knife sharpener for that one so I can actually get some unboxing knives that are sharp enough to cut through a standard box, or at least tape, which this one still is pretty sharp. My other ones there are getting pretty dull. So anyway, let's give you a first look at the bottom of the box. And as you can see, there's not much you can see from there. I will model this later and probably put it on my Instagram. This is a USA Nationals 2017 hoodie. As you can see, there are a lot of different cubes in this box. There should be some other stuff too, besides cubes. But let's just get into these one by one. Let me get my camera, the camera here all set up and focused and let's get right into it. First up, I'm just gonna go for like the smallest box right here. Let's try that right there. This, as you can see, is a cubing classroom keychain cube. This one being the 35 millimeter mini three by three. Have not tried any of these mini cubes besides the 50 millimeter. So I definitely want to try and get the full set here eventually. And one thing that was really interesting, I actually saw in TC Cubes' video this morning, is that these are actually modeled after an MF3S, which is actually a really, really good puzzle from the Cuban Classroom series. And not a lot of people know the difference between the MF3, the MF3S, and the MF3RS or RS2. I mean, there's too many Cuban Classroom cubes now, let's be honest. But this is a 35 millimeter and has the matte slash, uh, what do you call it exactly, frosted plastic, which is common in these and also the same as the MF3S. The turning on this is very, very impressive. Corner cutting, actually, wow, wow. About 45 degrees normal, and I'd say, wow, very, very close to line to line reverse. Very, very impressive for this little puzzle. I would say maybe second only to the Yushin as far as best mini cube on the market. Next up here, we have a Z-Cube, one by two by two. I actually have a funny story about that. I bought one of these a while ago. I forget exactly where, and I totally wrecked that thing. Basically, I tried to magnetize it with some spare magnets from one of those cube boxes where they give you the extra magnets. It went horribly wrong. I accidentally ended up super gluing the mechanism, and I just ended up putting a bunch of super glue in there and completely turning it into a disproportionate one by one. But here it is, I have another one, they weren't that expensive. I'm not sure how close I can focus on there, but maybe you can see the texture this time. This has interesting kind of textured, almost like band-aid material stickers on it. It's kind of funky, but there it is. The Z brand 2x2x1, and this one is a very, very difficult puzzle, almost in comparison to the 1x1. Not quite as hard as that though. 1x1 is a little bit more difficult. Okay, next up here, I believe this is a stickerless little magic. I have a couple little magics in black and also a magnetic one in this box, which I'm really, really excited for, but I do not have a stickerless one yet. And wow, that is actually really, really neat right there. Right out of the box, it turns amazingly well. Feels a little bit cheap, but that's how these feel. And also has the matte plastic, which I really, really like. It's interesting, the stickers on the stickered one there actually are more circular, leading you to believe that the cube itself has more circular centers. The stickerless one shows that it's not exactly true. It is kind of more of a squared off center design. As you can see, corner cutting here on this side. Let's check like, the tensions here real quick. Um, they're fairly loose out of the box, a little bit uneven. Definitely could be improved a little bit. But the tensions here, as you can see, are pretty good. And the quarter cutting is almost full. I think with a little bit of lubian tensioning, that could be made a little bit better. Let's try a different side there. Yeah, there you go. So, first impressions, it's not quite as good as the stickered variant out of the box, but it probably needs to be lubed and tensioned. All in all, I do like stickerless more than stickered in a lot of cases, so that's a really nice cube. I mean to get one of those for quite a while. Very inexpensive, and I definitely recommend you try it out. 
Next up here, I actually had some, I don't know what you call it exactly, they had some discount items or clearance items, that's what it was for the New Year's sale, and I picked some of those up, this one being a Diane Pyraminx in pink, I believe, which actually, it comes unstickered and does not include stickers, as far as I can tell, that's kind of odd. Let me get this out of the bag here, though. I'm going to check one more time. No, no stickers in there. Well, that's kind of weird. So anyway, this is a Diane Pyraminx. I've never had one of these before. I thought it was kind of cool in the limited edition pink. I was going to try and figure out if I needed to, like, unscramble this thing or not. But no, since it doesn't have stickers, I can just do whatever. But this one's kind of neat. It is the translucent pink Diane Pyraminx. Cool for the collection. Probably not going to be speed solving that one anytime soon. It does turn okay. Corner cutting is like... No, not even there. I think it's on tight tensions right now. It feels pretty tight. So anyway, there it is. I also don't think it's lubricated at all. Okay, next up here. I believe this is either the Shangshao Pearl. No, it's the Shangshao 2x2. That's what it is. The Kilominx or the Kibi Minx, depending on what you want to call it. I've been wanting one of these for so long. That is super, super cool right there. Wow. Okay, well, that's awesome. I finally have one. I'm going to have to figure out how to learn how to solve this thing and do some solves on it. It doesn't have very good corner cutting, at least on that side there. Just try another side. Okay, well, that side has a lot better corner cutting. It's kind of hard to grip it. There you go. Actually, pretty good corners cutting on that side there, but it turns very, very smoothly as most Shengshou puzzles do. And just having a 2x2 two two Megaminx is super, super cool. I'll definitely be doing a full review on that eventually. And there it is for the first impression. Very, very cool. Try to move my focus back here a little bit. This is the Yushin Little Magic V2 Megaminx. This is part of the reason my order took so long. This took an extra two days to come in. It was back ordered, but that also shouldn't be too much of an excuse. I have the original Yushin Megaminx, and I'm not sure if this is actually the Little Magic V2 or if it's the Yushin Megaminx V2 total. Anyway, wow, 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 wow. That is super, super smooth compared to the original one. The original one had a lot more catching issues. This one seems to have out of the box. This one feels a little bit lighter and cheaper, but it's also very budget Megaminx. So I'd say this gives a lot of different Megaminx on the market a run for their money. It cut, corner cuts 45, not much more than that. Reverse cutting, not super significant, just a little bit there, but just the smooth fast feeling of that there. It's a little bit, I wouldn't say gummy, but it's a little bit, I don't know, over lubed out of the box, just a little bit. So it's not like the fastest it could possibly be. And all in all, that thing turns very, very well for a budget Megaminx. That is the Yushin Little Magic V2 Megaminx. Went to try that one, and there it is. Okay, well, let's see if that works a little better. I wanted to reposition that light because it's casting too much of a shadow on the puzzles. But I'm about to readjust focusing after that. This one here looks like the Kung Fu Long... Which one is it there? The long something or other. <laughs> well, that sounds kind of strange. Long, you, long Yuan? Long Yuan. Okay, I cannot pronounce Chinese words at all. This is the Kung Fu Long Yuan 3x3. And as you can see, it actually comes with a cube stand in there too. So that's really interesting. This is a budget cube from Kung Fu, but it's their 3x3. I haven't tried this one before, and I've been meaning to for quite a while. I really like the 2x2. At least some of them I do. I've had a couple bad luck. I've had bad luck with a couple of them. But for the most part, I've really liked Kung Fu puzzles in general. The Kang Fang, the 2x2, and now I have one of the 3x3s to try out. As you can see, it is in plastic. It has the Kung Fu logo right there. And out of the box, first impressions here. It turns pretty well. I mean, it's a bit dry. You can hear some spring noise there. Corner cutting is very, very good. At about 45 degrees normal. Just under line to line reverse. And there you go. I had a full corner cut right there. 60 degrees there. So, I mean, it's going to take a little bit of break in, maybe some tensioning. It feels very similar. What does it feel similar to? This cube style 3x3. Three three. That's what it feels similar to. Not the old cube style 3x3, three three, the new one. Or is it cube twist 3x3? Three three? I don't know. It has kind of a cheap feeling plastic, but it's very, very similar to that. It is a very good cube, but it is kind of cheap feeling compared to kind of like, or I'd say kind of like the Yushin Fire, Yushin Water, or like I said, the. Cube Twist Cube Style Cube, which I'm not sure exactly which one that's called. It's the one with the pink side. All in all, a pretty solid budget cube. Also, I like the cube stand it comes with. It came with a green one there. Okay, next up here, I'm going to keep the box on this one. This is a Ong's Design May You 4x4 First Batch. I've heard this one has catching issues and all other things, but for $4, brand new from the cubicle, how could this possibly be a bad cube for collection? And also one interesting thing, I was just editing the TC Cubes unboxing, it says 14 plus ages, so I guess anybody under 14 cannot use this cube, it's illegal, I mean the FBI are going to come to your house and are going to arrest you. So anyway, as, as those tags usually mean, I mean when it says 14 plus it means it. it's like the legal driving age, legal drinking age, all that stuff, okay. 
Anyway, plastic off there. There it is with the onion logo on there. It looks very good, but once we turn it, we're going to be able to tell. Yep. No, it actually turns fairly, fairly well out of the box. Okay. Well, I'm pretty impressed by that. It's a little bit dry. I mean, it could be improved in that aspect, and I messed up checkerboard somewhere along the way there. Let's see if I can fix this here. That's kind of an interesting look there, but I did mess up the checkerboard. Okay. Well, let's see if I can fix this and bring it back to where it was. I have a line case. Okay, I'm just gonna keep it like that. Anyway, quarter cutting, pretty good. Not quite a full piece, but it's a little bit older mechanism, so I won't expect too much out of it. It seems on pretty tight tension, so if it's loosened, could actually turn a little bit better. Like I said though, this is a $4, four by four, at least on clearance from the cubicle, because it was the first batch, and I've heard there were some catching issues, which I'm not having right now, surprisingly. So, very, very interesting. Great deal at $4. That is the Kung's design. May you, 4x4, I believe. More for the collection than anything else. I will solve it, though. Okay, pardon any background noise here. It is right after supper, so a lot of people running around. Next up here, we have a... I forget exactly what the main brand on this is, but this is the Moju M3, 3x3. It comes in this really interesting kind of plastic box compared to some other cubes. That's kind of unique. Let me grab a different knife here and tear right into that. That's a two-hand opener, so it's kind of different. But like I said, it's a plastic box and you do kind of have to cut some tape to get into it. A little bit different than a lot of other cubes, but this is supposed to be a pretty good cube. So I think it's worth the time and effort to cut into it, right? Okay, well, we'll hope so. Let's see if I can get this out of here now that I've cut the tape. I'm not sure if, even if I can. There you go, something came out of there and there we go. That's really interesting that it comes with these top and bottom things. I've heard those are break-in tools. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. But these are kind of interesting. Cube manuals down on one side, and there's that in the other. As you can see, it has the Moju Cube logo right there, which is really interesting. And here it is, the Moju M3. I've heard a lot of different mixed reviews, mostly good about this cube, and I really want to try it. While first, first impressions there, it feels like a Yan 3. That's just going to be my first thing. It's very light, very, very, very fast. Maybe a faster Yan 3. It's like a Yan 3 crossed with an MF3 RS2. So, very, very interesting cube. I like it out of the box, actually. Let's just try corner cutting here. It has full corner cutting. That's very, very impressive for what it is. It's a bit of a lightweight cube. I don't know. And all in all, tensions out of the box are pretty good. Like I said, it feels like a Yan 3 cross with the MF3 RS2. If that sounds good to you, then this is a good cube. And it definitely seemed like a good cube to me. I like that one, for sure. Not going to be my new main or anything, but it's pretty good. Okay, next up here, we have a Z-Cube. This is probably the Z-Cube Magnetic. I'm pretty sure this is like a MF3 RS Magnetic by Z-Cube. Very, very inexpensive. I think I got it on sale for as little as like $10 maybe even, which the magnets in there feel fairly weak. And it's definitely super, super low on lube as these uh, factory magnetic puzzles tend to be just because they have to unlube it to magnetize it and then they don't tend to re-lube them. But out of the box, this thing feels very, very good. 45 degree corner cutting and about line to line reverse. So, wow, that's going to be a really, really good thing. And I've heard a lot of people talk about this. It is a bit of an older release, but a magnetic cube at this price is really awesome. Okay, so I actually just took apart an edge piece there. And as you can see, there are the magnets. They look about like four by 1.5, probably around N35 strength. And it really seems to be a well magnetized cube. We're gonna see how the magnet durability and everything else works. But all in all, a very, very good budget magnet cube. Obviously, there are more factory magnet cubes than there used to be, but that was one of the first and a very inexpensive one at that. Okay, next up here, upside down box. This is the Volk 3, Mini Volk 3, and there's something a little bit special about this one. If you notice, I actually do have a Mini Volk already. So what could this one possibly be? Well, obviously, it's the Volk 3 Limited Edition Rose Pink Mini. And as you can see, it comes with two sets of stickers, four center stickers there. It has this Apple-esque box with the manual and all that. Below the box here, it comes with some extra pieces. And actually, interestingly enough, it just comes with two, one edge and one corner, different from the other packaging, which came with individual small pieces. So let's just get this out of here. I'm not going to sticker it in this video. I will definitely do that later. It'll be in the collection video, which I'm probably going to do here in about two weeks, maybe three. We're going to see. I have a bunch more cubes coming in, so I'm just going to wait for those to come in. And then hopefully I can get a good cube collection video. I'll probably have a long one and a short one. Wow, out of the box. It is lubricated. It's not like a lot of these DIY ones that are not lubricated out of the box. Wow, this turning is kind of interesting just because it's so small. I'm not used to it. But wow, what a nice cube. 
I'm very, very impressed with the turning on that. The rose pink color is very interesting, good for the limited edition. The internals, some are primary, but mostly rose pink. And that's really interesting. Corner cutting, 45. Actually, has full corner cutting. As expected, it is a Volk 3 Mini. Very, very, very good cube. I would definitely recommend it for one-handed if you have smaller hands. Otherwise, just very good for collection slash a travel cube. Put that back in there, and let's get on to the next one here. Okay, so the packaging is actually a little bit distressed on this one. This is a Maru 4x4. I want to get into some more vintage speed cubes. And the Maru isn't exactly super vintage, but it's about as vintage as you can buy still today. I have a feeling these are going to be phased out very shortly, so I had to pick one up. And it was on sale. I actually got a really good deal on this. Let's see the best way to carefully open this box without wrecking it too much. I do want to keep the box, even if it is a little bit distressed. But anyway, let's just quickly look at the box here. This is made in Taiwan, Mario Cuber Shop. Has a bunch of different stuff on all different sides and kind of a cool looking box here. It's too bad it's a little bit wrecked. This is an old school cube to be sure. I'm curious to see the mechanism in here. I think it's similar to an Isshin, but I have no idea. Haven't had one of these before. Also there's a cube stand in there, which is really nice. And I actually like the look of that cube stand. That is a really cool looking cube stand right there. Okay, also you got a manual there, and the cube here, which is in some sort of kind of like tape on every side. <laughs> what is this, a fold? Yeah, pretty much. It has the kind of swooshy tape stuff here. Let me get it close to the mic for one. Just that very satisfying tape stuff on every single face. And there it is. Let's get the logo oriented correctly. The Maru 4x4. First turns, first impressions. I think this is the V5. I'll put it up on screen if I'm wrong or not. Maybe V4 or something else. I don't even remember what the version it is. I just thought it had some version number attached to it. First impressions, it turns better than an Isshin, I think. I haven't tried an Isshin before, but it does have corner cutting. And though it catches a little bit, wow. Just that sound is super, super cool. Super clicky and swooshy. Wow, that actually turns fairly well for what it is. I mean, it's probably not as good quite as like a good broken in Shangshao, but just the speed and everything else at which it works is really, really nice. I like this cube, very, very good for the collection. And I don't think you're gonna be able to get these for much longer, so pick them up while you can. This is a Maru 4x4. Okay, have a bunch more Maru cubes coming too, which those will be here in a little while. Looks like my light went out there. That one has very low battery life, so I'm going to have to try and fix that. Let me see if I should boost my ISO on here or not. I think I'll just do that. Might be a little bit overexposed, but that's better. Hopefully this camera doesn't run out either. I need to get an extra battery for this camera since it only has such a long filming life. But without further ado, let's get back into the box here and stop talking about cameras. Okay, next up here, we have a Moyu Tanglong. This one is in brown, I believe, which I want to try and get some of the different colored 3x3 cubes that Moyu makes namely the gray and some of the other ones like that. This one is in coffee or brown, depending on where you buy it from. And it's really neat how they have that dyed plastic there. As you can see, the brown color is really, really interesting. And I think that would be a really fun solve. Also, I do like the Tanglong. I only have one right now and I wanted to try some more of them there. Corner cutting out of the box. It's well lubed out of the box, which is good. Corner cutting is actually just past 45. And reverse is just under line to line. Yeah, right about there. So very, very good. Let's check the tensions there. Tensions are fairly good. Really cool seeing the brown internals in there. All in all, very, very neat cube. If you like the color, definitely pick this one up. It's a little bit older for a speed cube, but still really neat. Okay, next up, this was one I'm really excited about. This is a Moyu Aosu, but it's not. It's the Moyu Aosu King Kong, as they call it, but it's actually an Axis Cube. And I am super excited about a 4x4 Axis Cube. I wish they had a 5x5 Axis Cube, but the 4x4 will have to do with parody and all. I do like Axis Cubes. It's not exactly my favorite puzzle, but it's right up there along with the Master Morphics and the Ultra Morphics from Shangshao. And as you can see, there it is, the 4x4 Axis Cube. Let's quickly see if I can do a checkerboard on this. Just give me a second here. Let's see if I can figure out how that would work. That's going to be kind of tricky, I have a feeling. And then maybe two there. Yeah, I don't think I did that correctly. Okay, well, let's just go for that. That is what I'm calling a checkerboard. It's not a checkerboard, but I might post the checkerboard to my Instagram later. Once I get this cube solved up, there it is. The Moyu 4x4 Axis Cube. That is super cool and is also very inexpensive. It's like 20 bucks, which I mean, it's not inexpensive, but for a shape mod like that, that's really cool. And next up here, let's just go for this bag. This is a Cuber's Home bag. I've never tried the Cuber's Home company. I've heard a lot about them. And this looks like a new bag from them. So that's really cool. I like what they're doing with all the custom speed cubes. I might actually get a 
bigger cube from them in the future. As you can see, it actually has some spare stickers here. So that's very nice. And also, is there a logo in there or anything else? Let me take a quick look. Nope, that seems to be about it. As you can see, this is a Yushin Little Magic M. I've been very excited to get one of these, and here it is from Cuber's Home. First of all, it is slightly lubricated. Okay, well, that's really nice. I like how they do that. Like I said, it's my first Cuber's Home cubes. I don't know exactly how they do things. The magnets feel very, very weak. They don't feel like super strong magnets. It's also on very tight tension, so I'm actually very impressed at the turning for how tight tension is on. It can't even corner cut 45, and reverse is actually pretty good for the tensions. But like I said, tight tensions, once I loosen that up, it's going to be a lot better. First impressions though, it's swooshy, it's fast. That's pretty awesome. If I had to guess, probably like um, three by 1.5s or four by ones or something like that. I mean, it seems like lighter duty magnets in this cube, but it still has that magnetic click just a little bit. I mean, you can feel it's magnetic and that's going to be a really, really nice cube right there. The Little Magic M is one I'm really anticipating. So with some setup and lubing, that's going to be really cool. Next up here, this is a cube style cube. I'm not sure exactly which one it is. This is the outline stickers cube style cube or the carbon fiber outline. Wow, I actually don't know if I order this one or not. I'll put it up on the screen if I did. But either way, this is a pretty interesting cube by cube style. Needs tensioning and lubricating first turn impressions. But it is going to be a pretty nice one after that's done. As you can see, corner cutting is zero right now. But look at those tensions. I mean, that... That is like the tightest possible cube ever on most sides. Oh man. So it's going to be a good cube once it's good because I actually have some of these before. That's what I was talking about. The cube style slash, I don't know exactly which brand I was saying before. One carbon fiber outline kind of loops on a phantom cube type thing. I don't think I ordered that. That might be a free gift. I will put it up on the screen. If it is, I don't remember exactly. Next up here, we have a Wit Eden Wit 2 3. From what I've heard, this is a collector's cube, but I want to try it out. I've never had a Wit 2 2x2 two two before, so let's get right into this one here. As you can see, first off, a little piece of cardboard there. Got to restart my camera, though. Wow, so I'm going to restart my camera. That means we're at 24 minutes recording already. It's going to be another long one here, but that's about what happens with these cubicle orders. This is a WIT2 version 3. It actually, turning on the box here is not too bad. I mean, I'm not, it's not perfect, but the smooth, the turning laterally like this is very smooth. I think corner cutting, now corner cutting. Wow, okay. Corner cutting is about 45, but I do feel some minor catches and stuff and just normal turning. So, wow, I think that's actually going to be a pretty good cube. If you can hear those catching noises, that's about what you get. I bought it for more of the collection, plus it was on sale. So I guess we'll see if I can get some of the other ones there to compare them to. I actually really like the feel in that cube. It's very on par with the Diane, in my opinion. Okay, next up here, there is a hole in a box, and there seems to be something wrapped inside there. It looks like a Shang Shao. This is probably a Shang Shao Pearl 3x3. Let's try this out. I'm very excited about this one. I'm not sure. I've had mixed, I've heard mixed reviews about this one. So I'll be curious to see exactly how it performs. I've heard it's unstable. I've heard a couple other things. It's either the Sheng Shao Pearl or the Sheng Shao Ji Yun. Is that the other one that they have? Or the Fang Yun. I think that's it. But anyway, out of the box, super, 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 super dry. Okay, so I really can't rate it that well for that. Corner cutting, it is extremely tight. It felt almost like it was kind of cracking there. It's extremely tight tensions. Squared off corners. I'll put on the screen which one this is. If it's the Sheng Shao Pearl or the Sheng Shao Fang Yun. Either way, it does seem like a good cube, but it needs to be loosened before I can tell you anything more about it. So, I don't know. It has some kind of rattly sounds inside it. So that's kind of odd. Anyway, whatever Sheng Shao that is, that's a good one. Or at least it could be a good one. So I'll be able to check later on. There we go. That's actually really cool here. We have a Maru 2x2 two two in a kind of cool box. That's actually really neat how it's shrink wrapped and stuff. I almost don't want to open that. If I had bought two of these, I would not open one and open this one. But I'm going to open this one just for the vlog, just for the unboxing here. And let's just get right into it. I'm definitely going to save the box, but I will have to sacrifice the shrink, which I'll show you something here in just a minute on the shrink, which is kind of interesting. Lubricant inside, non-flammable. So if Customs opens this up, they'll say, oh, the lubricant's not flammable. We are fine. Okay, that's good. 
and I'll let go and man, it's covered in lube. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the lube inside here went everywhere because this entire box is super luby. The whole box is pretty much ruined. Oh man, yeah, there's gonna be lube everywhere inside here. Well, that's just great. Okay, well, here's your lube bottle. I'm assuming that's been in there for like four or five years. Maybe a little bit less, I don't know. It's leaked, the entire bottle is completely gone. And there is a downside about this cube. So now I'm gonna have a very overlubed Maru 2x2, I can tell already. So I might buy another one of these just to keep in the box because that is pretty cool. There it is, the Maru 2x2, it looks very good. Oh man, that turns so fast because it has like a million gallons of Maru lube. Okay, that was a, that was a ridiculous overestimation. It has that much Maru lube in it, which if you know how much Maru lube that is, that's a lot of Maru lube. And man, it's completely thoroughly coated. So there's like, there's almost no corner cutting on this one, okay. Actually, I take that back. There's a little bit of corner cutting on this one, but just the, <laughs> let's just get aligned here and try this. Yeah, you can almost do a full 360 degree spin on this puzzle. I think with a little bit of practice, you probably could. It has this really cool papery feel to it. And all in all, it's definitely up for only for the collection, but with all this lube in here, it turns pretty well. Okay, well that's the Mario 2x2. Pretty cool for the collection. Okay, next up here, I'm gonna save all the stickers and lube and stuff for last. This is a Mario CX3S. They actually ran out of the CX3, which I had ordered, so they sent me this one, which was pretty good because I think I paid on sale five bucks for a CX3, and this was marked at like 14 or 15, so good on the cubicle there, but I actually ordered this one in black or the original one translucent green or something like that. But this should be an interesting one to try out. This is basically just the 56 millimeter version of the Maru CX-3, which is a very classic speed cube. I actually have some of those coming. The original ones, I think we'll get them off eBay. But without further ado, let's get into this one. If you've seen the box here, this is a really, really cool box. Very vintage, made in Taiwan, as you can see right there. Let's get right into this here. I might have to open it from the bottom to avoid damaging the box. I'm not sure the best way to open that there. The top flap seems very secure. So let's try opening it from the bottom here. Just going to let that out of there. And wow, that logo on there is really cool. Very, very old school. And logo, very, very few, or I mean, there's flooring holes, but they're very, very small. First turns, wow. Very light plastic, first of all. But secondly, that turns really cool. I mean, that's like a, solid vintage speed cube feel. Now that's really neat. Corner cutting, wow, actually, they got the piece. But anyway, corner cutting is very, very solid for a cube like this. It went to 45 and almost beyond. Let me zoom in here quickly. There is a edge piece, or I should say a corner piece from this cube. And if I can pull out an edge piece here, there is that. So it's almost like a guong mech, but it's quite a bit more complicated and a little bit different. That is really, really neat. Okay. Well, no torpedoes, so that's why that piece went flying. I'm gonna have to go find that later. That is a really cool cube for the collection. Very excited to have that cube right there. Next up here, this is a cube I've been wanting for a while. I need to try and magnetize this one, probably. This is a Chi Yi Sail 6 centimeter. I actually forgot I ordered this one and almost ordered another one, so I'm glad I didn't. Well, I mean, it wouldn't have been that bad, but this is a Chi Yi Sail in 60 millimeter size. It feels almost normal, which is actually really good out of the box. Out of the box, it has kind of a weird feel. It feels like there's a bunch of lube dumped in the core, but it hasn't made its way out to the pieces yet because it feels pretty heavy and luby but then the pieces are a little bit dry. And actually see, now that I'm turning a little bit, it's breaking in. Wow, this is gonna be a great one. Okay, this is gonna be the one I'm gonna solve on camera here. I might switch to this for my main, just because I like bigger size cubes and I really wanna try out to see if this would be a good one. I think 61 to 63 millimeters would be probably the ideal size for my turning style and hand size, but this one is a good start and I'm really, really, really excited about this. Curious how my times will affect my times, but let's get right into solve through the camera. Ready, set, go. I'm not going to be timing this here. So it's complete, just random solve, but this is a really cool cube. Wow, I'm really excited to have one of these finally. Been wanting one for a while, not looking at the viewfinders. Sorry if it's out of focus a little bit there. This is really, really neat just because of the size and everything else. It doesn't feel very large, but just that larger size makes it so much easier to turn for me. Okay, this camera's flashing, but it's probably going to stay around for a little while, so I'm just gonna keep unboxing here. And by that, I mean the battery's almost out. So let's get into the next one here. Without further ado, Fangkun Cube. As you can see, I forget which one this is, the Fangkun Freshman Cube. It comes in an interesting kind of cardboard box instead of the normal kind of glossy cardboard box. And no plastic on that. And wow, the first impressions here. 
that has a very, very unique feel. Very, very gummy out of the box. But wow, it's so, like, I don't know, stable? I guess that would be it. It's like the complete opposite of a lot of these cubes that are really unstable or flimsy. This one is very solid. I think it might be either really tight springs. Yeah, that's it. Because, I mean, like this one here, one side's pretty tight and one side's not. So I have to do the tensions a little bit differently. But first impressions, this seems like a very stable cube. Let's try a side that actually is loose enough. And that's a little bit too loose. Corner cut. Yeah, okay, almost 45, not quite. I need to do the tensions on this one. First of all, it's very gummy and luby, and secondly, the tensions are really bad. It's not going to be like a 10 out of 10 cube. You might actually have to take uh, like some scotch bright to the edges there just to smooth them out a little bit, kind of like the original Chi 2x2. But wow, that is a solid budget cube right there. Very unique turning style if you want to try something different from the usual gummy and unstable budget cubes on the market. And lightweight, that one's actually pretty heavy. Okay, I'm going to save that one till last. Let's get through the rest of these here quickly. This is MF3 RS. I don't know exactly what's special about this one and why I picked it up. Let me take a look here. Is this the stickerless pink or did they throw us one free? I'll look at my receipt again. I'll let you know. I'm, I'm expecting they might throw something in free here because it took so long. Sometimes they do that. But here is an MF3 RS. Very, very good cube and stickerless. I have two of these already. But you can always use another one. The stickerless ones, in my opinion, are better out of the box by far than the stickered ones. Though they become about equal once you set them up. Standard MF3 RS, a very, very good cube. Okay, next up here and almost to the end here. This is a Z cube, glow in the dark, 2x2x1 two by two by or 1x2x2. By two by two. Yeah, that's what it is, which the first one is also correct, but it's not the way they put it on the box here. Let's pull this out of here. This is a really cool one just because it's translucent. So you see the whole mechanism there, and it's also glow in the dark. That's really cool. These actually have a bit of corner cutting. I don't know how I can show that. No, I don't know. Maybe this one doesn't. The other one had a little bit of corner cutting that I had. And like I said, very, very difficult to solve. Should be a fun one, though, and I like the translucent. That is really cool. Is that checkerboard? No, I'm not sure how you checkerboard one of these. Yeah, it's just that difficult. I mean, I can't even figure that out. Okay, so next up, last but not least for, on the cube front, there's some more stuff after this, but this is a GAN 249 V2 Magnetic. Been looking forward to this cube for a while. First off, the box feels very lightweight. I was expecting to have a pretty sturdy box. This box does not feel super sturdy. It feels kind of like cheap cardboard. Down in there, you actually have a tensioning tool, which seems to be just a normal plastic tensioning tool. And let's see here, just a manual and a couple other things down there. Nothing crazy. And here is the cube itself. First of all, it feels lighter than I thought it would. I mean, I should expect it from Gan Cube, but this one is fairly light and it should be a really good one. I like the frosted plastic, first of all. And also, just off the top of my head, I'm going to be switching this as my main, pretty much guaranteed. I mean, I don't have a lot of 2x2s two that I really, really like, and I think this is going to be it. I wish it, they'd make it a little bit bigger size. The 49 is a little bit small. If they made a 53, it would be really, really awesome. But the magnets are actually fairly strong in there, but they're really, really nice. If you look on the inside there, it has the honeycomb pattern. That's really cool with the primary plastic on the sticker list. And I am just really excited for this cube here. Let me just do a quick hand scramble and solve here. Turning seems very smooth out of the box, very light. As kind of the GAN cubes, it feels like a GAN UM with the magnets in there. It has about that kind of magnet strength. It's a little bit different than the SM, but with the honeycomb pattern, it's interesting. Let's just get to this here. I'm bad at two by two, but let's try it out. Ready, set, go. Solve white cross. I am color neutral on two by two. I just don't do it that often unless I see a good bar or something. So there you go. GAN 249 V2 Magnetic. My new main, very, very cool. Pretty pricey for what it is, a 2x2, two two, but it is GAN we're talking about here. Okay, next up here, I have Yushin 5x5 springs and Maru soft springs. And it looks like I threw in some other springs in there. I'm going to have to look at those and I'll put that up on the screen once I figure out what those are. But basically, I have the Maru soft springs for a Yushin 3x3. I want to try those out. And then I also had the uh, Yushin 5x5 to replace my Yushin 5x5s I took out to put in my Yushin 6x6. Okay, so my camera's almost out of battery and we're coming to the close here. How long this is. Here are the Diane stickers for the pink Pyramid. So they did not leave those out. That's good. There they are. It actually includes two sets. Very, very nice. Next up here, we have a ton of stickers. You can read quickly. Let me just pull this out of here and you can kind of read through what these are. 
So for a variety of different projects in the future, I just have a bunch of different stickers, sticker accessories like sticker peelers and stuff. And there you go, my other camera just went out. Hopefully it saved the footage and everything. Just a ton of stickers there for a bunch of different things. Probably like a Rubik's icon, DIY icon cube and some other stuff there. So I'm just gonna switch to this camera up here. Hopefully that one's still gonna go for a while. Spare parts. So these, this is a Wooji piece and a Wooji center cap. So there we go. And actually, you know what? Maybe the center cap will fit the side of that Wooji. I claimed that maybe I didn't buy the right piece for that. The one I got from TC Cubes needed a piece and I thought I might have got the wrong one. I guess I got it in green too. So I don't know exactly what I was thinking on there, but maybe that'll fit, maybe not. I'm not sure. It doesn't look like the right type of piece. Either way, that's how it is. Uh, why do I do this to myself every single time? Every time I order from the cubicle, I end up getting another one of the world's hardest possible puzzles ever made. I'm going to make a little time-lapse thing or something on my, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll just probably post picture on my Instagram. I don't think I'm actually going to make a video of stickering this thing. This is the cubicle one by one Mega Minx. This is to complete my full one by one series from the cubicle. And it came free with my order here. If I can get it to focus. As you can see, it looks very innocent, very unassuming in its current form right here. Uh, it's not until you put the stickers on. This becomes literally like the king of puzzles. I mean, it's the hardest one ever to solve. I have the Pyraminx, the standard one by one, and nothing compares to the dodecahedron. So that's really sketchy that I have that there. I don't know. I don't know why I do that to myself, why I buy those. So anyway, that is a one by one Mega Minx. Very cool for the collection, but other than that, I have no idea why I, get, why I do that to myself. So this is really good that I got these right here. This is the Lubicle pack or the Lube pack from the Cubicle. As you can see, I have Silk, DNM37, and Lubicle 1. I've been wanting to try these for quite a while. I have Silk already. Last time I bought Silk, it actually, I mean, I used it in a ton of cubes and I'm pretty much out of it. So I'm glad to have more of that. That is amazing lube. DNM37 is supposed to be like Maru, but it doesn't dry out. And Lubicle 1, I forget what that does, but it's all really good. I mean, all the Lubicle lubes are very, very, very nice. And that is really cool. So also on sale here, I got this cubing mat. It's actually my first real cubing mat. I mean, I have some speed stacks mats that are huge. I finally have a smaller cubing mat. I'm probably gonna film my videos on this because it's really cool. Cubic USA Nationals 2017, the cubicle.us. I don't care that it's outdated and I don't get why they put them on sale after that. Cause I mean, they're almost of historic value after that. I don't know, whatever. Nationals 2017 cubing mat, very cool. And looking at the bottom here, there's one more thing, which I'm not sure. I might just throw this back in there. Yep, 7x7 seven seven parts. The Cubicle business card. I'm sure I've seen one of those before, but there it is. The Cubicle's fancy business card. It actually feels a bit flimsy. I don't know. I can't imagine the turning on this puzzle is actually going to be that great. But it is cool that they actually include a one by one esque puzzle with their orders. It's a little bit thin. I mean, it's not like a 10 out of 10 quality puzzle, but for free, I mean, what can you expect? So anyway, it's the future by probably, I don't know exactly, probably four or five days after that cubicle unboxing. I actually took a little while to get that edited and up. I actually lost the footage though at the end there if you saw that. Also, I'm just on normal camera audio, but I guess this is about the end here. Just wanted to film this quick segment. There is the Diane little Pyraminx thing. And also here's that one by one Mega Minx. I actually don't have the business card anymore. Or I would show that. But anyway, I guess that's about where I'm gonna end off this video for today. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe below if you enjoyed. Stay tuned for more unboxings, reviews, videos, whatever I intend to do in the whatever I intend to do in the future. Also check out my Instagram at KSCuber. I post pictures of all different types of cubes and stuff. We're about to hit a thousand followers over there, which is really, really crazy. So anyway, like I said, that's about it. Case Keeper out. Goodbye.